So this might be an unpopular opinion, but I believe Amberlynn Reed. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel. How are you doing? I hope you guys had a great week so far. Um, I'm doing pretty good. I just ended up having a surprising motivation to just hop my booty back up on this camera and have a conversation with y'all. And if you can tell by the title, I'm talking about Amberlynn Reed today. But I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I'm not going to join the hate train that is usually associated with Amberlynn Reed. I actually have some other thoughts that have been kind of messing with me that I kind of want to share with you guys. So before we even get into that, if you're new here, this is Journey to Find K and I'm K and I like to talk about mental health. I like to talk about weight loss. I like to talk about anything that gets me on this camera, that gets me motivated to have a conversation with y'all. And so today it just so happens to be Amberlynn Reed. Now, before I get into all of that, again, I first want to say thank you to all of you who watched my Rewired Soul video. I super appreciate it. I just had to say those things to get them off my chest, especially coming from a professional point of view. And it feels really good to see that there are a lot of people that understand where I'm coming from, who get the frustration. So I appreciate all that love. I also want to say welcome to my new subscribers. I mean, bruh, to even have the fact that there's like almost 30 people that care about what I gotta say I'm just like social anxiety is kind of like you KK what are you doing why though they're gonna be watching you but it is still pretty cool to see that I have some people out there that get what I'm talking about and want to hear me talk about it so I say welcome and I thank you guys so much you're jumping in right when I'm starting this platform I'm still getting used to it. I'm trying to figure out a good upload schedule, what I want to talk about, how I want to talk about it. So just the fact that you even care enough to jump in now as you have, I thank you guys so much. I appreciate the love and it means so, 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 so much to me. Kind of freaks me out a little bit, not going to lie. Whew. But thank you. I thank you guys so much. So luckily, since we got all of that out of the way, let me just hop into this. You're probably like... You believe Amberlynn Reed, Kay? You believe Amberlynn Reed? And before y'all trip, yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Now, let me clarify. Let me clarify what I believe, okay? Um, I believe that she went to see a psychiatrist, and I believe she's on a mental health journey now. I definitely believe that. And I'm going to tell you why I believe it, and I'm also going to get some other things off of my chest today. So let's just hop on into it. Let's just get into it. So why do I believe her? Hi, if you're new here, I work in mental health. Um, and I watched Amberlynn's video. I fell down a rabbit hole. <laughs> I like saying rabbit hole. Um, just a little tidbit. I love Alice in Wonderland. I love Alice in Wonderland. Oh my goodness. I have a tattoo on my body. I love Alice, Alice in Wonderland. So anytime we say rabbit hole, I automatically go to, we're late, we're late, we're late with the rabbit, you know? Are we judging me? Okay, whatever. But I fell down a rabbit hole today with Amberlynn Reed, right? And I ended up just watching a video. It was recommended to me because Big Brother knows everything. And they were just like, hey, you want something to talk about today? Watch Amberlynn's video about going to psych a psychiatric person or whatever. And I was like, all right. And so I clicked it and, you know, Amberlynn Reed style, it's fluff. And then two minutes of the actual topic that she put on the dang on title. And I was so excited for her. I was so happy. And then so when the video was done, I was like, let me go down to the comments because usually stuff like that, I like to try to comment. And she had a lot and they were not nice. Yeah, they were not nice. And a lot of them made me very upset because it showed a lot of people don't know what they're talking about. And I said, hey, hey. This will be a great time to educate these people real quick. So when it comes to her psychiatric visit, I believe her. I believe her. And I believe her because not only did it happen the way that it does at my clinic, but it could have happened with me personally. 
okay? And some of it did happen to me personally. So let's talk about it, okay? So if you don't know who Amberlynn Reed is, yo, just hop onto the search, search Amberlynn Reed, fall in that rabbit hole, enjoy, and come right back to me, right? So now that you've done that, you know who she is. She's problematic, okay? We all know she's problematic. And I watched her though because I'm on a weight loss journey as well. If you haven't checked out my video about my weight loss, I'll link it up here. Go ahead, check it out. Um, and with me being on a weight loss journey and she was saying she's on a weight loss journey, I was gravitated to her because um, just from her size, I was like, hey, she's in the beginning. I want to watch this journey. I enjoy watching that type of stuff. I'm not going to lie. It's why I do some of the stuff I do at work. I mean, I take my clients to lose weight to the, at the gym and stuff like that. Like, I just like promoting health. Whatever your version of health is, I love it. I live for it, right? So I was all about that. I was ready to watch her journey. And then, of course, the problems came, and we all know why she's problematic. So today I was just like, oh, this is cute. This is like she's actually getting some help and stuff like that. And I'm going through the comments, and people are just dogging her. Now, I will say this up front the disbelief the doubts the people calling her a liar she has done that to herself i am big on accountability hi check out my last video where i talk about like substance abuse and stuff where i worked in the tr treatment clinics and one of the things we've learned is unlike some people who think it's enabling we know how to handle people but we also hold people accountable right so the way she behaved on her platform, treating her um, her viewers and clickbaiting them with the weight loss thing and stuff, that's why I understand people don't believe her. They're like, you've done this before multiple times. Girl, did you really go see a psychiatrist? Your story's not adding up, da da da, da. Let me tell y'all something. I believe her because her story does add up. And the reason why it adds up is because at my mental health clinic, you can go in and see someone and get a diagnosis like that. Now... Let's give you a little bit of an understanding of how that works. My clinic mainly works with low income people. So you are on Medicaid, Medicare, both private insurance and Medicaid, whatever the case is, but you're low income. And when you come in for an intake appointment, you call our, our phone number, someone says, oh, you wanna get an appointment? And you say, yeah. And they go, oh, okay, we got you scheduled for tomorrow because we try to get you in as fast as possible. That first appointment, is usually with a licensed therapist someone who has the capabilities of offering an initial diagnosis you are credentialed for it i'm credentialed for it i don't do it because i'm not comfortable with it but you get credentialed for it whatever your agency's rules are also if you're a licensed therapist being licensed you're able to credit you're, you're credentialed to diagnose okay so you meet with someone who's able to do that intake appointment, who give you that initial diagnosis. Now, based off your service plan, whether you want therapy or meds or both goes into what happens next, right? So if you just want therapy and you don't want medications, that therapist you met, if they're able to, they'll be your therapist or they'll assign you to somebody else. But that diagnosis that you received and that first appointment is as close of a diagnosis that you could possibly get without seeing the psychiatrist, right? It's a valid diagnosis. So you can leave out of that appointment that day and you will have a diagnosis that can kind of guide you on what's going on with you. Now, they will try to tell you, hey, it's better to go see a psychiatrist even if you don't want to do medication so you can get that final diagnosis. But as a patient, you are able to just go see that one person, that therapist or whatever the case is, get that initial diagnosis and go away. Um, or just do therapy and that's your diagnosis throughout therapy, whatever the case is. You also have the option of seeing a psychiatrist, especially if you're starting meds. If you're starting meds, you see a psychiatrist right then there. We call them prescribers. You see that person. You are not going to get meds without seeing that person. So if you're saying, I want to do meds, they're going to schedule you with a psychiatrist who gives you that final sticking diagnosis because they can change your diagnosis at that time that fits so in the purpose of giving you medications to help you right so when it came to Amberlynn's story everyone was just like oh no who would do all of that in one appointment my agency who would do all of that to uh who would give you all those diagnoses that's the first time they've seen you my agency um 
all of that type of stuff. And that's where I was upset because I'm like, okay, you guys, don't sit here and shame her on some information you don't know because like she did say, there are people who are out there who have never done this situation, who have never um, thought about getting help. They might be thinking about it and then they're looking and seeing that, oh, well, she's saying that's not how it goes and what it is and oh, is it really like this? I wanted to jump on here and say, her story is true. Okay. I believe her story is true. Now, could she be a super mastermind and be totally lying and did a lot of research and figured out that that's what could happen or whatever? Sure. Anybody could really do that if you want to do that, you know, but from what her story said, I believe her might be unpopular, but I do just from my own professional, I, my own professional side, personal side, same thing happened to me. Um, I have private insurance. The agency I went to, I met a licensed therapist first. He gave me my diagnoses of bipolar, anxiety, PTSD, and ADHD. I walked away like, whoa, check out my mental health. My mental health one, it goes in a little bit deeper on that video. Um, but I walked away like, whoa, I have a diagnosis and I went about my day. I didn't go see a psychiatrist. I wasn't ready for meds, but, but I had my diagnosis, right? I went to see my psych my psychiatrist almost a year later and now I'm on medications and he did confirm those diagnoses. Sometimes they change them, sometimes they don't, but you go through that whole process again with the person giving you those medications and it could be an hour. Now, usually when we do an initial um, prescriber appointment, it's usually 30 minutes where we're at, where I'm at in Arizona. Um, it's usually a good 30 minutes, but it can go to 45 to an hour depending on that patient's history and what they got to share in all of that stuff right so when she told that story i believe her especially take into the account that this woman makes good money on youtube let's not play you would not be able to be the size that you are if you were not able to afford the food that it takes to be that size and you're on youtube you have money you're not on medicaid when you're not on medicaid that's a different ball game going to see a psychiatrist especially out here where i'm at um i had my supervisor explain that to me one time because i was like oh because they had in my position i had to call the people who missed appointments all of this stuff right so i'm sitting here and i'm like do i have to call these people they just have private insurance and he was like oh they missed a prescriber appointment they're fine because you don't have to they have the option of going straight to the psychiatrist on his available date if they work with their insurance and if you do that your whole first appointment is going over your history just like the therapist does going over um what your diagnosis would be just like the therapist does the only thing different is this person has the power to prescribe meds so hey you can be mad at me if you think um, I'm naive or whatever the case is, but tell that to my agency and tell that to my own personal experience. I believe her, okay? I do. I'm popular opinion. Oh, well, but I believe her. Mm. I agree with her that she went to see a psychiatrist. Boom, unpopular opinion. Oh, well, I'm sorry, but I do. Just from my own personal experience, work experience, all of that jazz. I'm gonna hit you with another unpopular opinion and then I'm about to dip because I've been trying to get this video. I want to get it up for you guys, okay? <sighs> You're probably thinking, what is a K? Just say it. I believe Amber Lynn's page, her weight loss journey, I believe that it is a decent representation of weight loss. I do. Okay. Let me explain before you're like, oh, okay, well, she hasn't done anything. She's gained weight. She's been playing us. I get it, okay? And I want us to hold her accountable for that. Now, let's not be hypocrites in how we do so. Let's not sit here and shame her and fat shame her or anything like that while saying, we just want you to be healthy. Let's not do that. Let's hold her accountable for the clickbaiting. Let's hold her accountable for the manipulation. Let, let's hold her accountable for making her viewers feel like she is just using them for views, just using this topic, topic for views. Let's just forget that. We're going to bypass that part. We hold her accountable for that. I get it. I understand and I agree. 
But when you take that all out of the equation, take out all those angry feelings, take out all that disappointment, take out all that dis, uh, disbelief, all of that, take that out of the equation and just watch her as a woman trying to lose weight. Just watch it. And I bet you'll have a different outlook when you do that. I've tried to put yourself in her shoes and you'll understand what I'm saying. She is a decent representation of what weight loss really looks like. She really is. And I say that because that was one of the reasons why I jumped on YouTube because like I said in one of my videos, I had a friend, she said, people don't talk about the realness of weight loss. People don't talk about the struggles mentally. They don't talk about the struggles physically. They don't talk about what it really is like to lose weight. And Amberlynn's case is case in point, okay? But I will tell you, if you really knew someone in your life who was on a true weight loss journey and they felt comfortable with you to tell you their ups and downs and struggles, you would be able to relate that with Amberlynn. When she did her Snapchat rant, there was some stuff throughout the manipulation and trying to make people feel bad for her. She made a valid point talking about people take away the fact that these people are human. She made a valid point. I don't feel sorry, again, I will say this, I do not feel sorry for her for people not believing her because again, like Jacqueline Hill, like the rewired soul, like Trisha Paytas, you have sat here and continued to do the same behaviors over and over and over again and people are tired of your shit. That's just it. But on the other hand, what I want other people to look at, aside from her drama and problems, or her problematic behaviors. I want you to understand that this is really what weight loss looks like. It isn't easy. It's hard, especially, and now I'm not someone who diagnoses, I'm not diagnosing this woman, I don't do that, not this channel. But as someone who can speak from experience, I understand dealing with food addiction. I understand dealing with binge eating. I understand dealing with depression eating or emotional eating. I understand the highs and the lows, right? So I want to bring this to you guys and want you guys to understand taking away all that drama and just looking at the video and really how her life is. That is a representation of what it's like to be morbidly obese. I hate saying that, but it's tr that's what they use nowadays, okay? But that's the realities of being morbidly obese, continuing to eat the way that you are, and having the funds to eat the way that you are. Because let's be honest, to be at that size, it takes a lot of food, okay? And that is a sign of privilege. It's showing that she does have the money to take care of her health if she wanted to just as much as she has the money to eat right but again this is an everyday struggle that people have with a lot of money or not right so when you take away her problematic behaviors and you take away um the things that she has done to cause her viewers to dislike her or distrust her looking at the whole picture of just weight loss she represents it very well Okay, and I want you guys to really sit back and just open your minds and understand where I'm coming from. Understand that as a society, we do this instant gratification. We have this need to see everything play out quickly. We have this need to see it play out perfectly without really understanding a lot of stuff happens in the background. If you haven't, definitely feel free. I don't know if I linked it earlier or not. I might have forgot. But definitely feel free to check out my either my mental health video or my weight loss video. I talked about how in the background I was struggling. I, or maybe it was, sorry, ADHD. Maybe it was my um, video about social media. It might have been about that. Um, but what ended up happening is what was I decided to get on a platform because I wanted to hold myself accountable and I wanted to document my journey. And I also wanted it to be something to where if someone just came across it, if you were able to relate, awesome. But if not, I'm still just documenting what's going on with me. 
And I can understand that's how she might have started. And she ended up being, being a bigger platform than she thought she was or whatever the case is. But even with that bigger platform, we have to remember that we only see what these people put out on social media. Just like me on my fitness Instagram, you only saw the good for a very long time. You only saw the positives. You only saw the weight loss. You saw the scale when the numbers went down. You saw the clothes when they fit and better. You saw the clothes when they are fitting better. You saw the change in the clothes sizes, but you didn't see the mental breakdowns behind the scene. You didn't see the binge eatings behind the scenes because I was so tired of my restrictive eating. You didn't see um, the addictive behaviors of exercising. You didn't see that. What you saw on social media was what I put out there. And with Anne Berlin, a lot of the stuff that she is putting out there, yes, it might seem like fluff to some people. It might seem like bull crap. But when you see those little tidbits, those little gems in those two minutes that she leaves there, those two minutes that she clickbaited you to wait for and watch, that's really a journey. That's really what the struggle looks like. That's really what it is like to be someone who's trying to totally reframe your thinking, your way of eating, and get healthy in whatever sense of the term that means for you, right? And it's very disheartening when you see people constantly just like, oh, you're lying, this and that. No, just because you're not seeing the results that you would expect to see doesn't mean that a person is lying about their weight loss journey. What ends up happening is these people start understanding what people really want to see and they might just show that part or they might see what gives them more attention and they might just show that part. But when it comes down to Amber Lynn's page, just looking at it without paying attention to the problematic issues I understand her journey. I see a weight loss journey. I see an unsuccessful weight loss journey, but I still see a weight loss journey. And that is something I need people to remember. Yes, she's problematic, but a woman that size talking about weight loss, you have to understand it's not going to be easy. It can take some people years. It can take some people months to get back on track, to get to doing what they want to do. comes to Amber Lynn, I will give her her due and say that's what weight loss looks like for some people and I want you guys to understand that I want people to understand that it's not as nice and quick and easy or oh I had a little struggle and some long motivational quote to make you understand that yeah I struggled but now it was great it's not always that there's some days where you just eat consistently horrible there's sometimes where you might just consistently eat horrible for a year two years and you call yourself on a weight loss journey that's still a journey weight loss journeys isn't just about going down it's also up down maybe to the side to the left up uh, let me get this let me eat that that's what it is it's and so yeah when it comes to watching amberlynn yes she's problematic yes she does things just for the clicks views and stuff like that which is trash i agree with y'all and i can understand the distrust and i can understand the disbelief but what i can also tell you is as much as y'all are feeling that that's what weight loss looks like for some people and that's just it that's what weight loss looks like for some people. It's not as hunky-dory as people think it is. Just because she chose to put it on a platform, we can't expect her to be perfect. We can't expect anyone who decides to share their lives on um, social media to be perfect. We can't expect authenticity and we can't expect honesty and we can't expect um, things like that, right? But we can't expect for the weight loss journey to be pretty. We can't expect for the weight loss journey to go the way we think it should go because let me tell y'all, it ne never does. It never does. Never goes the way you want it and to As go. someone who lives with being addicted to food, as someone who lives with binge eating, as someone who lives with bipolar disorder and deals with depression, as someone who deals with emotional eating, I can look at Amberlynn's page and push aside the um, problematic behaviors and really see what it is. And that is a woman on a weight loss journey and that is a true weight loss journey. It's not pretty. It doesn't meet the expectation that you may have for what a weight loss journey should look like, but that's a weight loss journey.
And as no matter how much hate you throw at it, as no matter how much um, disappointment you might feel about it, I'm just going to let you know that's what weight loss looks like for some people. It's not always just losing it and doing it the way you think it is. There's so much stuff that goes on in the background that we are not privy to that we need to keep in mind and understand that this is just social media. So, hey, that might be an unpopular opinion. I'm sorry, but to me, that is a representation of weight loss. That is a representation of weight loss and mental health. Because, again, I've been there. I'm still there. I'm trying to get stable. I'm trying to be okay. And when I look at her taking away all that problematic um, issues and behaviors that she has, I still say kudos to her for showing what weight loss can look Progress, no progress. You have losing and gaining. You have eating correctly and not eating correctly. Everyone's journey is different, but for Amberlynn, I'm just going to say that's that's what weight loss looks like for some people. And I'm not going to hate on her for taking this long to try to get better. I'm not going to hate on her for um, posting all these videos saying she's going to do this and all of that stuff and maybe stumbling along the way. I'm not. So I do believe, like I said, that she is showing what weight loss looks like for some people. Take away the problematic behaviors and all of that and the stuff that she's been called out for multiple times she still is showing what weight loss looks like for some people it's progress no progress it's gain lose it's motivated not motivated it's healthy eating not healthy eating um and then there's other stuff behind it where it's mental health playing with it as well depression eating binge eating disordered eating whatever the case may be but she is showing a representation of what weight loss looks like and what i basically just want people to understand is yes she's problematic but it doesn't take away from the fact that this is truly how some people really do live that aren't on this platform do i believe that she can come back from all of this hate and drama and people um not believing her yes it's going to take some work it is going to take some work it's going to take her being consistent in videos up to date videos now like videos that she's doing now it's going to take her being um open and honest and showing some real progress people are going to be demanding from her proof if you really are about this youtube life and you really want to sustain sustain your lifestyle that you're living but in a more healthy way show that authentically show the you going to see your psychiatrist you don't have to take the appointment you can just say hey i'm going here show it on your social media it's like hey look at me at the doctor's office stuff like that as much as we say it's not your as much as we may stress that you don't need to prove anything to anyone when you have this type of a platform and you are sitting here saying that you care about your platform and you want people to believe you and you like trying to share things with your life and stuff like that then it does matter it does especially if it comes down to the point where everybody thinks it's just about your coin then you definitely need to switch some things up but for the other people i just want y'all to know i really do believe that she does represent what weight loss looks like outside of the manipulation and problematic behaviors she does she does because that's what weight loss looks like weight loss isn't easy it can take people years up and down i'm gonna lose weight i'm gonna lose weight i'm gonna lose weight to actually do it i was one of them but most a lot of us just don't have a public platform to be judged so critically okay so those are just my two unpopular opinions um dealing with amberlynn reed like i said i'm not going to bash her because society does that enough on us big people okay let's talk about fat phobia another time we'll have a conversation about that um but i'm not going to bash her and i didn't want to bash her because as someone who's on my own weight loss and mental health journey those two aspects are something i wanted to talk about today because i believe her i believe that she went to see a psychiatrist and started that service those services because it fits with how my clinic runs and my experience and i also believe that she is a good representation for weight loss outside of the manipulation and and the um problematic behaviors that she has because she's really putting a lie to not everyone has a successful weight loss journey not everyone can also just do all of this by themselves or whatever the case is and lose a gang of weight sometimes it does take years it does take um other help therapy stuff like that to be successful but she is showing 
what weight loss looks like for some people. You might not like the fact that she lies and she plays these games and does this or that with her channel and all of that. I get it and I understand and I agree because I'm one of them. Like if you're going to have a platform, do use the platform authentically and do it for the greater good. I get it. But outside of the problem problematic behaviors just sit there and look at her videos really pay attention to some of the stuff that she talks about really pay attention to some of the things that she has to deal with so yeah those are just things i wanted to talk about um just because that's my thing i love talking about mental health and i love talking about weight loss that's how i feel i wanted to jump on here really quickly and just kind of share my feelings because these are two subjects i love talking about y'all already know i love talking about mental health i love talking about weight loss i say it in every video i'm on a weight loss journey all of that jazz i've done videos about things like this so this whole situation was just something that i wanted to speak about i believe she went to a psychiatrist it fits professionally for me at my clinic and personally for me for what i went through I also believe that she shows a good representation of weight loss outside of the problematic things that she does. Why? Because not everybody loses weight quickly. Not everybody's journey can be happen in, can happen in a month, six months, a year. Not everybody's able to, once they get started, to finish. This is real life. This is really what happens when somebody, or what could happen when someone tries to take control of their life and lose weight or get healthy in whatever terms they're trying to get healthy in and, and I don't agree with the bullshit I don't agree with the actions that she did that has all of her followers just calling her liar and not believing her but I also don't agree with these people sitting here and putting that hate on her either I don't because at the end of the day her weight loss journey is her weight loss journey. It's a good representation of many different ways people deal with weight loss. And I think that we need to be more empathetic about that type of stuff instead of being so quick to talk shit. And that's just it. And again, I said, I understand she's problematic. I get it. I totally understand that. But I also understand what it's like to lose weight. I also understand what it's like to go get psychiatric help. Try to take care of your mental health as well. I get it. So those are my, I guess, two unpopular opinions. I believe that she went to see a psychiatrist. I know that's crazy because nobody really believes anything that comes out of her mouth. But based off of my work experience and my personal experience, I believe her. She explained one of her medications that she's on, the mood stabilizer. I'm on that mood stabilizer. I got that whole exact spiel about the rash and stuff. So I believe her. When I say that she is a representation of a weight loss channel, I mean that you take away the problematic behaviors, all of the things that have her followers saying that they don't believe her or trust her, let away and she still represents what weight loss looks like for some people. She's on a platform so she gets she's going to get a lot more scrutiny, but for people at home, there are many a many of people who have said they are going to start a weight loss journey and haven't lost weight. There's many of people who will say I will do it this day and then end up not because it's hard. It's not easy. This one's different and it makes me happy as problematic as she is, it makes me happy to see someone showing what a weight loss journey can look like for some people. Because for some people, no matter how hard you wanna do it, no matter how motivated you may be up here or even in here, sometimes it just doesn't happen. And when you add in a mental illness, man. Those are just my two points that I wanted to make real quick. They might be, like I said, some unpopular opinions, but they're just how I feel. I believe she went to see a psychiatrist because I've been there. I work in the field. Experience speaks everything to me. I'm on the medication that she was talking about when she talked about the rash. I believe her. Okay, I also do believe that she is a decent representation of weight loss. I do believe that because not everyone loses weight when they want to lose weight. Not everyone is able to stick to a weight loss plan or a weight loss journey like some other people can. Then you add in mental illness, then you add in um, maybe a food addiction or anything else. I don't like I said, I don't know her, but just speaking off of my own personal experience and people that I know that have dealt with this type of stuff, you add in in anything else that can become a barrier you get what Amberlynn is deal dealing with you do so take away the manipulation and stuff like that like I said I don't feel sorry for her because track records with influencers matter and it's her fault that her followers don't believe her I'm sorry it's her fault but 
when it comes down to just the weight loss part of it, I do believe that she does show what it is like for some people who don't have a platform to try to lose weight. Does she, if she has a platform, that kind of makes it hard for her. But there are plenty of people out there who don't have a platform, who don't have a hundred and something thousand followers, who sit here and say they're going to lose weight and don't follow through, who sit here and are living with a mental illness and are overweight, but can't get that motivation or get out of that depression or whatever the case may be to lose that weight. There are plenty of people who don't have a platform who are truly living the way that she does and she's shedding a light to it and i need people to really understand that that everyone's weight loss journey is different and the way that hers is going best believe there's multiple people out there that are doing it they're just not being as problematic as she is and that's just it do i think she can get um back up and get people back on her side again i do it's going to take some work do i think she's willing to do that work But it's going to take some work. It's going to take her being authentic. It's going to be take her stop posting these videos from two months ago and start posting some real stuff now. It's going to take her um, really documenting, seeing the psychiatrist, working out, eating correctly, showing the meals, especially because you made a weight loss platform. So... I think she can get these people back on her side because I do believe a lot of them truly, genuinely want her to get healthier. I believe a lot of them truly have been following her for a very long time and really want to see her succeed. But I also want them to remember that her not succeeding is what weight loss looks like for some people. Okay, so let me know how you guys feel down below. Do you agree with me? Do you get my points? Do you understand where I'm coming from? Let me know. Do you want to teach me something? Do you have something you want to explain to me that I might have missed? Let me know down below. I love having a conversation with y'all. I love seeing everyone's different point of views. So don't be shy. Definitely leave a comment if you want to. And if you made it this far into this video and you're not subscribed to me, what are you doing? Hit that button. I would love to see you here again at my next video. I mean, come on, it won't hurt you. And if you liked what I had to say, give me a thumbs up. Don't be afraid to follow me on my other social media. Instagram and Twitter is journey to the number two, find K. And hopefully I see you guys over there and I will see you guys in my next one. I'm still figuring out a schedule. I'm trying to make sure I keep intact. A decent consistent schedule for you guys I'm thinking Sundays and Wednesdays um, just depending on honestly how I'm feeling mentally and physically because oh girls been going through it um, but I am figuring that out so definitely subscribe hit that bell so you get notified when I do post a video give me a thumbs up follow me on my social medias I would love to continue this conversation with you guys outside of YouTube and I will see you guys in my next one bye